good evening. Thank you all for coming. Welcome to the very first Wine Speak Live. Um, um, we're going to introduce Jim Summer from Summer's Winery and his winemaker Nacho. They're from the Napa, the Napa Valley, and we're going to taste through his wines, and he's going to tell us all about his wonderful wines on his property. But in the meantime, I'd like to tell him a little something about us. We're here in Maryland, and we're situated halfway between Baltimore and Annapolis, and we have this little wine shop here where we sell uh, organic and clean foods and, and try to sell the best wines we can find, and, and, uh, and we're just really pleased to have you with us tonight, so thank you for joining us. Now that you know a little bit about us, why don't you tell us something about you? Well, Jennifer, thank you very much. First, I applaud you. Uh, I'm going to be so bold to say this is the first cyber uh, wine tasting party I've been to. <laughs> over 20 years, I've probably been to a thousand of them anyway. And Ignacio has been to a many number of them also. But as Jennifer mentioned, I'm uh, Jim Summers. Um, uh, I started this endeavor. Oh, over 17 years ago, and it's essentially, I tell people endearingly, it's a hobby that got out of control. And today, um, we are, are um, we make about 15,000 cases of estate wine, and then we make a, a, a similar number, it varies from year to year, in our non-estate wines. But uh, we bought the winery in 1996, but I have had vineyards since 1987. And we control our own approximately 70 acres of vineyards here, both in uh, Napa Valley and in the Nixta Valley, which is uh, Knights Valley, next door to us. Um, our home ranch is over in Knights Valley, and that's uh, wine originally came out in 1992. We made a special run of it when we didn't have a winery. We called it Summer's Ranch Merlot. Um, I think you may be tasting this Merlot tonight, and that's by far our oldest wine. But uh, I, I'm not quite sure all the wines, I don't have it here in front of you, are tasting tonight. But I know we're going to probably lead off with uh, uh, one that is very dear to us and we're very rare. And then I'm going to turn it over to Ignacio. But uh, uh, Charbonneau will be the first red wine we taste tonight. And you are looking at, if you can see us, Ernest and Julio Gallo of Charbonneau. We're the largest producer of this particular varietal in the world. Now, let me qualify that. There are only about 9,000 cases of that made anywhere in the world, and we make uh, upwards to 2,000 cases on an annual basis. Uh, I bought the property here on Tubbs Lane because it had Charbonneau, and it is, uh, of all of our red wines, it is uh, the most attractive fit with the widest variety of foods. And that's why I enjoy it so much, because I have it both with steak and I have it with salmon and, er and several other uh, uh, varieties of fish uh, from time to time. Uh, but I'm going to turn this over now to Ignacio, who's been our winemaker, and he's been here uh, one year less than the entire term of uh, the winery. So he's spent a few vintages here, and he can talk about the characteristics of the wine and maybe some of the vintages as they come up and down throughout the years, and uh, then I'll jump back in a little bit later. Ignacio, you want to? Yeah, hi everybody. My name is Ignacio. I'm the winemaker here at Summers Winery, and uh, I'm going to start with a Charbono. Charbono, I've been farming it for uh, 16 years, making it too. Uh, it's a beautiful wine, medium body, a little bit of earthy characteristics, and uh, it it goes well with a lot of kinds of food like tomato paste dishes. Um, it's just fun to make charbono. It's something different, and uh, I use about 70% American, 20% French, and normally it's been about 16 months in, uh, in barrels. So I normally make between 15 to 2,000 cases a year. So it's just fun to work with all this uh, something different. So, so uh, ladies, please ask us, and gentlemen, I can yeah. a few in there. Uh, Please ask us any questions. Uh, uh, the advantage is that we've got all the time in the world here, and if you have anything you want to know about a particular varietal, one, I'd like to put a raise of hands. How many of you had Charbonne before? Raise your hand. How many? What is this question? That, that's, uh, that, that's one more than we typically have in most wine <laughs> So uh, you are in a select company, young lady. Uh, uh, 
that's uh, uh, well, like I said, there's only about maybe nine thousand. So if you do the math, there's less than a hundred thousand bottles. And uh, I swear, the first year we made it, there is a club out here that uh, Engelman, which was known for Charbonneau, we called it the Charbonneau Society, and they were people probably my age. And in '97, when we released our first Charbonneau. Uh, I believe that society bought every bottle because nobody else knew what the wine was. Now we have a pretty good following in about, a, oh, I'd say about a dozen states, which is large for the, the small size of the run. But uh, it's pretty hard to take it away. Once people start tasting it, it becomes a fan favorite. And uh, I think it's also part on how Ignacio uh, makes the wines in general. All of our wines, they tend to be soft in their approach and very drinkable when they're young. And part of that is the, the nature of the grape itself. Charbonneau is a grape that uh, naturally is a, a very soft tannin wine. But don't let that fool you. Uh, tannins are usually associated with wines that live a long time. Tannins are there, but they're very soft because, uh, I believe anyway, because the, if you look at Charbonneau berry versus a, a char, uh, char, uh, Cabernet berry, it's about three times as large, and so there is uh, more juice for skin service there, and uh, they pick up less tannins. Plus, we don't use quite the, the, the serious oak program or as much oak program in Charbonneau as we use in the Cabernets. But uh, this is a great barbecue wine, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and so we are now entering barbecue season. Uh, this really goes well with anything you can think of barbecue. And I'm looking at the, in the background there, it looks like some cheeses. Well, all red wines go with great cheese, so you can take it and go with it. Any questions? Somebody's got a question. How long will it stay in the bottle? How long will it stay in the bottle? You, you know, that's a very good question. I've had 45, well, I guess 48 year old Charbonneaux. Um, if you ever get a chance and you go to Tampa, Florida, there is a famous steakhouse there called Burns Steakhouse. Right. And they have some very old Charbonneaux there. And they're not that expensive since they only paid a dollar and a half when they bought them. <laughs> <laughs> that was back in the 60s, early 60s. Uh, and today I think you can still buy it probably for, uh, well, I mean, buy it for a restaurant. And it would be a fifty or sixty dollar bottle of wine, which would sure be a real treat. Uh, to answer your question, they age quite well. We used to tell people when we first started, you could buy a bottle or a case of Charbonneau, um, and it would be the same place as a case of Chateau Montalina would be in in twenty years, and you'd save yourself a thousand bucks. But uh, that that might be even two thousand bucks today, but uh, the reality it does age well, and uh, it depends on how, how um, serious you sell our wines. I mean, obviously you can keep it with pretty stable temperature, and the humidity is uh, uh, have some humidity. And the reason we we want to have humidity is uh, we don't want the cork to be drying out, and once the cork really dries out. Uh, you've got all kinds of potential problems, and so that's why it's good to store wine in a relatively high humidity environment. But, but to answer it and sum up, uh, Charbonneau, uh, as far as we know, will age as long as most California can.